In a world of EMS podcasters, EMS Office Hours is the only live podcast bringing you the latest topics and opinions in EMS. Turn down your scanner and turn up your speakers as we join Jim Hoffman and Josh Knapp on their latest EMS podcasting journey. Hey guys, Jim Hoffman here for EMSSEO.com, uh, EMS Office Hours, and the Monday Minutes. Uh, doing a little new format here we're going to try out for 2017, try to be a little more engaging so you can see my face as we're doing these uh, quick study tips, and and uh, I'm going to, of course, put images and text and stuff along with this as well, but uh, let me know what you think about this new format in the notes below if you can, or send me an email to uh, admin at emssco.com. Um, of course, we're continuing on with the EMS quick study tips, and we're in neurological emergencies, and of course, every week before I do this, I have to try to talk about why this is important, right? It's not just important for EMS exams and getting to know the key elements and maybe triggering some uh, thing in your head that helps you understand or to get you to open up that textbook and study a little bit more on this particular topic if you're struggling with it. Um, but it's also great for when you're doing your your assessment on your patients, right? Remembering key elements of what you're looking for when you're assessing your patient. It's helping you with your documentation so you can document better. And it's helping you when you're interacting with other healthcare professionals as well. So you're more versed in what you're talking about, okay? And you build something I like to call that cash, right? That cash, C-A-C-H-E, with the other healthcare professionals um, that you deal with, right? So today, we're going to continue on, we're continuing on with the neurological emergencies. We're talking about assessment. Now, the assessment today and management I'm talking about is the general um, uh, uh, assessment and, and what you're going to find with these types of patients and what you're going to be looking for with these patients. Not anything specific like hypoglycemia or, or stroke and TIA. We'll get into those a little bit later inside uh, these quick study tests. But today, we're talking about general assessment. And of course, we're looking at our general appearance of the patient, right? What do they look like? What's your first impression of them? How sick do they do they appear to you? Okay, what's their level of consciousness, right? You want to see if they're alert, of course, right? COA times four, right? What's their uh, what's the date of birth? What year is it? What day of the week is it? Um, how many quarters make up a dollar? Who's the president? All those nice questions you can ask, but give them something more challenging as well. Ask them to touch something. Um, ask them something to, uh, to something that they can repeat back to you for memorization. Something like that, especially if you are suspecting a neurological event going on. You want to give them something a little bit more challenging than your usual four or five questions that you might ask them, okay? What about their speech? Find out if there's been any recent changes in their speech patterns, okay? Ask family members, neighbors, or even the patient themselves if they've noticed an issue with their speech. Are they having problems formulating words? Um, has it been slurred and then came back to normal? Things like that. Uh, what about their skin? Is it splotchy? Is it bruised, like a rash looking, right? That could be a sign of meningitis. Just something to think about. We don't see that too often, but it is something to think about, right? What about their posture or how they're walking, their gait? Has there been any changes with that? Have they been falling more often than, than usual? Okay, bumping into things. Uh, all these types of things that kind of, you know, kind of put that puzzle together for a neurological issue that might be happening, okay? So find out, has there been recent changes, right? Maybe the patient won't admit to it. Maybe they're embarrassed. Ask family members, okay? Of course, you want your vital signs. You know, hypertension is the big one to look out for, right? Look for their vital signs as well. Uh, that's kind of a given, right? Their head and neck, okay? What about ketones, right? Think about that hyperglycemia, okay? Um, you know, that smells a little bit like alcohol, and you'll know it when you smell it, okay? Um, and, of course, if you can do a, a blood sugar uh, level with a finger stick, go ahead and do that and see what reading you get. Now, to kind of help you, guide you into that assessment that maybe it's a hyperglycemia event going on. So if you're suspecting ketones, smells like alcohol, not quite sure, maybe it is alcohol, do a finger stick, okay? This is why we do finger sticks a lot of times on uh, our patients that we get that are, that appear intoxicated. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're hyperglycemic, right? So check that stuff out, guys, all right? Um, what about their thorax? Well, listen to their lungs, right? Look for hypoventilation. 
look for things like uh, hypoxia, right? CO retention, all the type of things you want to kind of focus in on, okay, that might be causing other issues going on with your patient. Okay, remember, if it's a neurological event, it could it could suppress their respiratory uh, function, right? Make them breathe a lot slower than what they should, okay? And, and the same thing goes again with your hyper, hyperglycemic patient, right? If they're in some sort of, if they're in a, uh, you know, DKA or something like that, and they're in a coma, they're going to be having that hyperventilation, that those, those uh, cosmetic respirations, right? Um, look for EKG changes, okay? Sometimes on neurological patients, you got to be careful because those EKG changes you see can actually mimic an MI, an, uh, an MI right? It can mimic a, 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 a myocardial infarction. Think about that stuff, guys, okay? This is the big picture here we're looking at, okay? I'm giving you all these kind of these quick, um, maybe, what, 10 tips here on your assessment, right? Think about all these things and how they're tying together, okay? Um, you see something on the monitor, looks like an MI, think about everything else that's going on. Don't just think it's an MI. Think about that neurological event that might be happening as well. And of course, the overall no nervous system. Look for symmetry, mark differences to both sides of the body, one side weaker than the other, things like that, okay? Um, you might find that they are abnormal to lead you more into some sort of neurological event that's going on. Okay, so, you know, thinking more along those TIA or a stroke or something like that. All right. So, guys, those are 10 um, kind of brief uh, assessment things you're going to be looking at for your overall uh, neurological assessment on patients when you're thinking about a neurological emergency that's going on. Okay. A lot of these we do in all of our patients, right? We assess their appearance, their level of consciousness, their speech, their vital signs, all that stuff, their lung sounds, their EKGs. We do that with a lot, almost every patient we encounter. And But what you're looking for in this, because we're specifically talking about neurological emergencies, are certain things that are going to trigger it to you, are going to lead you down a path to look for other things. Like I said, like the hyperglycemia, the hypoglycemia, strokes, things like that. Okay. Now, your management for these for, for neurological uh, emergencies, basic management, of course, is the ongoing assessment. Okay, that TAA might resolve on its own, or it might evolve to a stroke. Okay. Um, of course, your ABCs or CBAs. Okay. Um, again, I mentioned getting up that blood glucose. Okay, that's a good way to find out and kind of help you along the way. You know, treat that hypoglycemia if they have it. Uh, know if they have hyperglycemia, what you should be doing. Okay, uh, your protocols might let you give a lot of fluid for those hyperglycemia patients. Okay, um, of course, follow your guidelines or whatever it is that, that you're allowed to do for those patients that have a high blood, blood, blood glucose level. Okay, and what's that normal sugar? I mentioned before, uh, most people... Most protocols, anywhere between like 60, 70 to 100 um, is what your normal glucose uh, sugar level is they'll consider normal. You know, you get them all the time. They're 120-something, 180-something, right? You're not going to go crazy with those. They're not, they're not hyperglycemic to treat like crazy, nothing like that, but just something to think about, something to document, like I mentioned before, why this stuff is important, right? And something to pass on to the uh, ER staff when you get there. Okay, start an IV, guys, on these patients, and again, depending upon your protocol, you might want to give fluid, you might want to just go ahead and just do a lock, it depends upon your guidelines, right, follow your local guidelines when it comes to uh, fluid in these neurological uh, patients. All right, that's it for this episode, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope seeing me talk about it uh, helped you a little bit more and maybe made, made this a little bit more engaging for you. Um, if it did, let me know in, in the notes below. Send me an email. Again, it's admin at emssco.com. Uh, if you have some minutes of your own, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to go ahead and make a Monday Minutes here on a topic that you like. It could be something... Anything related to EMS pretty much because I'll break away from these study tips and do a special session um, just on something that you are interested in, something you're struggling with in EMS, something you want some feedback on in EMS. Believe it or not, your question could be getting asked by many, many people and the fact that you asked it first lets me do this and maybe could help a lot of other people out there in the field. So let me know about that, guys. Send me an email. It's admin, A-D-M-I-N, at emsseo.com. 
Um, or again, send, uh, go ahead and post it in the notes below. I can use the, I'll take it from there as well. Uh, be sure to share this video, guys. It really helps spread that social media, um, you know, juice for me and the site and these videos and helps a lot of other email providers out there as well, guys. So please go ahead and share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you, whatever you can do, um, on that. Follow me on Instagram and, on, and, and, uh, Snapchat. My handle there is EMS safe. Get me on Facebook if you're not already. It's facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional. Um, and I'm on Twitter as well at EMS safe. So follow me on all those social media channels. I do a little something different on every channel. So I think you'll enjoy those and interact with you more there as well. All right, guys, that's it for me. Any questions, comments? Again, the email is admin at emsseo.com. I'm posting it on here as well so you can take a look at it. All right. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, next week, we're going to continue on with this. We're going to be talking about uh, stroke. Uh, it's going to be next week and TIAs. Okay, so that's going to be next week's um, Monday Minutes. might be a little bit longer because it's kind of a little more of an in-depth sort of uh, topic. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll be dealing with that next week. All right. All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, I'm Jim Hoffman for EMS SEO and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.